opportunity secondly to welcome you to today's chemistry Wednesday as we have been doing this is our thing this is what we do every Wednesday at this time from 1 p.m. to 2 uh, p.m. Uh, for a period of one hour just to have your time and uh, take you through some chemistry so I want to say for those who have been viewing my videos i want to say thank you god bless you uh, also don't forget to visit my youtube channel uh, that is teacher kirwa and uh, subscribe and we and you also view the videos that are there and uh, shall all be well so uh, welcome today today is 2nd of september 2020 the, uh, your pilot is teacher Kirwa um, taking you through alkanoic acids this is organic chemistry 2 so we have done organic chemistry 1 we have done organic chemistry 2 uh, that's alkanols and uh, today I want us to wind up that particular part by looking at alkanoic acids so welcome feel at home feel free let us interact the comment box is free for you to comment. Uh, you can ask any question if you have any, and uh, all shall be well. So, welcome uh, uh, to Alkanoic Acids. Okay, so in our previous lesson, we are uh, thus last week, Wednesday, we did uh, a general discussion. Uh, we looked at a few questions on. Uh, alkanols the, the topic that the subtopic that we have done it already so we looked at our uh, questions applica application questions on that particular part and we answered that and uh, we completed that part so we are remaining with the second part which is alkanoic acids and i want us to handle that today and then uh, for detergents and uh, polymers we shall come back to it uh, at a later time so today we just do this when we are through with this and then we will say uh, what next after this so welcome uh, so alkanoic acids uh, as we said alkanols have a group OH now alkanoic acids have a general uh, have a, have a, have a, they have a carboxylic carboxyl group as a functional group so the functional group of alkanoic acids is called a carboxyl group and uh, this carboxyl group is C O O H so we have we have a C and then double bond O and then OH. So this is COOH. It is COOH. That is the functional group. It is called a, a carboxyl group. And so the other name for this, they can also be referred to as To as carboxylic acids carboxylic acids so because they have a carboxyl functional group then they are referred to as carboxylic acids the general formula the general formula is cn h2n plus one and then C O O H. The general formula 
is CN H2N plus 1 and COOH. Now where, of course we said, where N is equal to 0, 1, 2, 3, etc. Um, the difference between this and the other uh, organic compounds that we did, for alkanols, alkenes, alkenes, and alkynes, N starts from 1. The simplest member of those ones is where N is equal to 1. Now here we are saying the, the, the simplest one is where N is equal to 0. So N can be 0 uh, etc. So N starts from 0. Now for example, if N is equal to 0. So if N is equal to 0. If N is equal to 0 then this one will be C N C times 0. So this will be C0 H2 N plus 1. Now you realize that C times 0 is 0. So we will not have a C. And then H2 N N2 times 0 is 0. And then plus 1. So you will have the if N is equal to 0 then the formula will be H C O O H. Okay? If n is equal to 0, then substituting 0, uh, replacing n with 0, gives you H that. And this one is called methanoic acid. Okay, this is called methanoic acid. So that is uh, when we say n is equal. So that means the first member is where n is equal to 0. So this carbon is counted as carbon 1. This is carbon number 1, where the functional group is. So this carbon number 1, so therefore that is methanoic acid. And uh, now this, uh, this organ, these uh, carboxylic acids or alkanoic acids are found in compounds like vinegar, okay? You know vinegar? Vinegar is used uh, as a food additive and it contains carboxylic acids Majorly, vinegar is ethanoic acid, okay? Vinegar is ethanoic acid. The common name for ethanoic acid, sometimes they say acetic acid. So vinegar contains ethanoic acid. Now butter, you know butter? Yes. Butter, 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 butter milk. That. Now, butter contains butanoic acid, ETC. So, these are uh, occurrence of uh, these acids. Vinegar contains, either, actually, ethanoic acid is referred to as vinegar, the other name. Butter contains uh, butanoic acids. We also have um, the, the stings, bee sting, the wasp uh, sting, they also contain uh, these alkanoic acids. So that is uh, where they occur. So the first member is F, N is equal to 0. Now, uh, to draw the formula of that, so we have said if N is equal to 0, then you have H, C, O, O, H. This is called Methanoic. Okay, methanoic acid. Uh, if n is equal to 1, then the general formula is CN H2N plus 1 and then COOH. Okay, so if n is equal to 1, substituting that here gives you C1 and then 2 times 1 is 2 plus 1 is 3. So you have uh, CH3 and then COOH. Okay, now this is where N, we have N is equal to 1, but we have two carbons. So this one is called ethanoic, ethanoic acid. Uh, the formula is so you have 2 C. Okay. So you have 
this is the carboxyl uh, carboxyl uh, group. So that is CH3 and then COOH. Then if N is equal to 3, you will have C. So you have C, C, C is equal to 3, so you will have C3. H2 times 3 is 6 plus 1 is 7. So it will be C3, H7, C, O, O, uh, H. Okay. So you have three carbons and that. So this one is called butanoic acid. Okay. We have propanoic where N is equal to 2. I'm just uh, jumping the examples. You can, when you have the general formula at the end, then you can substitute any carbon atom. Now, if you, so this is one, two, three, the th uh, uh, oh, H. you have three carbons. So in gen in, uh, in total, you have four carbons. So one, two, three, four, and then H there. That. So this one is butanoic. Butanoic because it has one, two, three, four. But we are saying n is equal to three. We don't count uh, that so that somebody else may say n is equal to four. This n is equal to three, n is equal to one represents the alkyl group. This is the alkyl. So the functional group, as we saw previously, is COOH. Uh, o -H. This is the functional group. Now, from here, you can add beginning with H, okay, to, to, to mean methanoic acid. Then you can add CH3. You add C like that. So you add it coming this way. So this is carbon number one. So this is uh, butanoic acid, ETC. Now, generally, you can say this is C3, uh, C3, H. The other way of writing this, you can say C uh, three H. In total, you have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So you have eight hydrogens, okay? And then you have CO two. Uh, you can even say C four O two, okay? C four H eight C four H eight o two can you see that this this is the molecular formula okay so you have one two three four c four hydrogens one two three four five six seven eight so you have eight hydrogens and then you have two oxygen so that is another way so you can write it as this or this or even you see, this is CH3. So you have CH3, this one, CH3, and then CH2. CH2. Another CH2 here. CH2. And then you have COOH. COOH. So this, this, and this show the same, they represent the same thing. That is butanoic uh, acid. So those are different forms in which you can uh, you can write that. Now uh, maybe we can mention that uh, naming of this follows the naming of alkenes. Now alkenes, we said we have, for example, we have ethen. Okay, we have ethen. We have propane. ETC. Now, for you to name alkanoic acids, you replace the last E, this one, with oic. Okay? So that you will have methanoic. So you replace the E with O, so you have methanoic. Okay? You have ethanoic. You have propanoic. So just replacing E with O oic, O I C, uh, that gives you alkanoic acid. So that is nomenclature.
how they are verbs. Let's look at preparation in the lab. Preparation. Preparation of alkaloic acids. They are prepared by prepared by oxidation of alkanols. Oxidation of alkanols, for example, CH three CH two OH. This one undergoes oxidation. Do you remember the oxidizing agents? We have manganate, manganate for ions, uh, acidified. So this one, when it is oxidized, it gives you CH3, COOH, uh, acid. So uh, when this undergoes oxidation, when an alkanol, so this one is ethanol, Ethanol undergoes oxidation to form ethanoic acid. Forms ethanoic uh, acid uh, plus water. Now, uh, so this one is oxidation of alkanols where we are adding an oxidizing agent. You remember this was a reaction of alkanols. And we said during this process, potassium Manganate 7 changes color changes color from purple to colorless. Okay. So oxidizing agents we said either potassium manganate 7 they used may be used or potassium dichromate 6. So in the case of potassium manganate 7 the color changes from purple to colorless. This is due to due to reduction of manganate ions to manganese 2. So these manganate ions are purple in color. When they when 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 this alkanol undergoes oxidation, this one will be oxidized and the oxidizing agent undergoes reduction, just as we did in form one redox reactions. So this one will be reduced to manganese. Now manganese ions are colorless. Um for in the case of potassium dichromate six. Changes color from orange to green. It changes color from orange to green. This is due to reduction of chromate ions. Chromate 6 ions to chromium uh, sorry. chromium 3 ions so chromate ions are reduced to chromium chromate 6 ions are reduced to chromium ions this aqueous so reduced to chromium ions CR3 positive uh, which is green so this is orange this is green uh -huh. Now, in this process also, to ensure complete oxidation of the alkanol, then excess oxidizing agent is used. Excess oxidizing agent is used for complete for complete reaction or oxidation. So in order for this to go to completion, excess manganate 7 ions, or excess potassium manganate 7 or excess potassium dichromate 6 is used. 
whichever one that was chosen uh, for that uh, work there. Mission for Alcabel Cassettes. Uh -huh. Okay, properties. Properties of alkaloic acids. Uh, now, okay, uh, properties I look at, majorly I discuss the chemical properties. You can find out the physical properties. Uh, maybe I only need to mention that. Uh, these alkaloic acids, because the functional group is COOH, then they contain hydrogen bonds. So this one contain hydrogen bonds, and uh, together with the alkanols, also alkanols, we said they contain hydrogen bonds. So uh, you expect if they have hydrogen bonds, that the, the melting and boiling points of alkaloic acids are higher. They are even higher than that of alkanols. The reason is because the uh, hydrogen bonds in uh, in carboxylic acids or alkanoic acids are more compared to that of alkanols. So let me look at the chemical properties. Uh, chemical. Should I have said chemical properties of alkanols? Uh, of course, the first one we said is combustion. All organic compounds, when they are burned, they form carbon dioxide and water. Uh, so the fa let me do the first now. Um, just to mention, there is a point I need to mention before that. Uh, now, alkanoic acids, for example, uh, ethanoic. Let's use an example of ethanoic acid. Uh, are these are weak acids alkanoic acids are weak acid now this one undergoes dissociation dissociation is breaking down in water so it breaks down in water to form see okay plus hydrogen ions now when it dissociates in water it gives up this hydrogen so that you have a negative here now when it undergoes dissociation it produces hydrogen ions in water now the presence of hydrogen ions in water we say these are weak acids alkanoic acids are thus regarded as weak acids since they undergo partial dissociation in water dissociation so uh, alkaloic acids undergo partial dissociation uh, partial dissociation is partial breakdown. Uh, if you look at uh, just uh, revisiting mineral acids, the mineral acids that we know, we have HCl, hydrochloric acid. We have sulfuric 6 acid and the others. Now, when this one undergoes dissociation, you will have, it produces chloride ions. Okay? This one produces sulfate ions. You see there is no other hydrogen here. These are only negatively charged ions without hydrogen. So, but in this other case, we still have other hydrogens. So it does not give up all the hydrogens it has. That's why we are calling it partial dissociation. And because they undergo partial dissociation, then they are said to be weak acids. If you remember from one work, when we were looking at um, the pH scale, the pH scale, the universal indicator and the pH scale, you realize that weak acids range have a pH of between 4 to 6.5 there. Strong acids are 1 to 3. This is what was done in Form 1. So the pH of this one is around 4.4 uh, 4 to 6.5.
uh, in most cases five there or six so that's that's uh, we are saying they are weak uh, acids the so we look at reaction with metals reaction with metals okay just uh, before i leave this part so this one is chloride ion this one is sulfate ion now this is ethanoic you look for another color this is ethanoic ethanoic acid you remember the other time we say this is hydrochloric acid you get chloride ions Sulf sulfuric six acid you get sulfate ions nitric five acid you get nitrate ions uh, carbonic acid you get carbonate so this one is ethanoic now when it loses the hydrogen is called ethanoate so this one is called ethanoate okay Ethanoate. Ethanoate means an alkanoic acid undergoes dissociation to form an alkanoate. Okay, so reaction with metals will let me just use the example of ethanoic acid to represent all the others. So if you have CH3 COOH reacting with metal sodium, then you have uh, this will be so what happens is you just replace sodium with uh, you replace hydrogen with sodium so you will have ch coo sodium plus hydrogen gas uh -huh. so that is uh, how sodium reacts with uh, so this is ethanoic ethanoic acid this is ethanoic acid This is sodium. This one is called sodium ethanoate plus hydrogen gas. Now, actually, in Form 1, we looked at properties of acids. How acid react, acids react with metals? And we say that any metal reacts with any acid to form a salt and hydrogen gas. So this sodium ethanoate is a salt and then hydrogen gas um, two is reaction with with the base for example sodium hydroxide okay reaction with bases also it follows the reaction of acids with bases Acids react with bases to form salt and water. So this one will be CH3 COOH reacting with sodium hydroxide to form. So it forms salt and water. And we have said the salt is an O8. Okay. So this one will be CH3 COO sodium plus water. So this is sodium ethanoate also, the salt plus water. So that is a, a reaction of alkanoic acids with the bases. So generally maybe you can say an alkanoic acid, alkanoic acid with a base, that's a general reaction. Any base gives you salt and water the salt is the o8 so the o8 is a salt bidanoate ethanoate propanoate butanoate decanoate etc and uh, that's reaction with base reaction with uh, carbonates with carbonates 
Also, we will use an example of sodium carbonate to represent all the other carbonates. So you have CH3, COOH, reacting with sodium carbonate. Let me give the products down here. Now, uh, from for one uh, work properties of acids, when an acid reacts with a carbonate, you will have a salt, a carbon four oxide, and water. So this also will be salt plus carbon four oxide plus water. Now the salt, you get the salt from this. So you have CH three COO sodium plus CO2 plus water. Mm -hmm. So you have sodium ethanoate. This is sodium ethanoate, the salt, plus carbon dioxide gas plus water. So uh, generally you, we can write that in general terms an alkanoic acid reacts with any carbonate, metal carbonate, to form, to form salt plus CO2 and water, like that. So you have salt, carbon dioxide, and water, just as the other acids uh, do. Uh -huh. Maybe last but not least, and this is what we have done uh, more than once, is esterification. Esterification, you remember we said, is a reaction of an uh, alkanoic acid and uh, an alkanol to form an ester. This is what we did in our last lesson. So just for the purposes of this uh, discussion, you have, for example, CH3COOH. Uh, this is ethanoic acid reacting with ethanol C5C2H5OH. Now we said this hydrogen takes the OH so that you have water. And then it, you have CH3COO and C2H5 plus water. You remember that reaction, esterification? It is similarly the one we did uh, in alkanols. So this is ethanoic acid. This is ethanol. We said ethanol, when you take away OH, you have C2H5 which is ethyl. So the name of this is called ethyl ethanoate. That is the name of uh, the ester. So that is ethyl ethanoate, the name of that ester. Uh, uses of alkanol of alkanoic acids. So now, those are the chemical properties of alkanoic acids. Um, to, for, for more of this discussion, you can refer to the properties of acids. These, these also form under acids. The only difference is that these ones are weak acids, but they behave like the mineral acids, the dilute acids that we did in form, uh, form 1, and also in form, form 2 salts, and from for the first topic, uh, you can refer to that. Uses of alkanoic acids, let me just mention a few. Uh, they are used as solvents, organic solvents. They are used as food additives like vinegar. Vinegar is used as food additive. You know the uses of vinegar. We can also say uh, butanoic acids. Butanoic acid is used 
in food preservation. Preservation of food. Butanoic acid is used in preservation of food. Uh, th these are some of the uses. We also have benzoic acid. Benzoic acid is used in uh, in uh, what do we call the, the 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 ice cream vendors for cooling. Okay, uh, it is we said in form one benzoic acid is a preferred coolant because it uh, it sublimes and it does not leave any. Uh, residue. So these are carboxylic acids or alkanoic acids if you like uh, That is it. Now there is something I want, I want to mention So you can find the other uses There are more uses of alkanoic acids uh, in the textbooks, in the internet, uh, all that now, um, when you do uh, paper three, when you do paper three, or uh, the practical, the practical exam that is chemistry paper three, there is always a question. For example, uh, example of paper three question. Okay, I don't know if that will be the. The, the, the a correct topic you can still uh, put on your topic after I do this discussion now there is always for those who have done paper 3 there is that last question on organic chemistry now in some instances you have been given a universal indicator the either the universal indicator paper or the universal indicator and then you are supposed to take a piece of it uh, you put it in a substance that you have in a test tube now uh, you realize that let me just draw this you will find the procedure later on you always write the observation and the inference okay so you have taken the uh, universal indicator paper, you put it in a substance or a solution in a test tube, and then you compare it with that, the, the, the universal indicator paper. Now, at the universal indicator paper, when you compare, you realize that pH, pH is 5, okay, or 6.5. Normally, when the pH is 5, you write an inference and say, you, when you are inferencing, you say uh, weak acid, weakly acidic. The substance is weakly acidic. Now, that is what we have explained here. That's what we have explained in this discussion here. We have said it dissociates partially in water to form an alkanoate to form a weakly acidic compound. And we have said these are weak acids. So now, when you are writing presence of the substance is weakly acidic, that means it is an organic uh, acid. It is a carboxylic acid or it is an alkanoic acid. Number, this is the first one. Now, let me continue with this. So that's one. Now, two, two, you always have some, some sodium carbonate in a, you have been supplied with sodium carbonate, and then you add sodium carbonate to, to, to the substance in the test tube. When you add sodium carbonate, you always write that there is fizzing or bubbles or what you like effervescence okay it it, uh, it dissolves in water normally you say the compound is um, it slightly dissolves in water so you say presence of a polar compound so that is uh, that is it about 
organic chemistry too that is it about alkaloic acids and or the carboxylic acids so you can uh, read more uh, on your book 4 textbook uh, there is there are more discussions uh, maybe I did not mention but most importantly this is what we have for alkaloic acids so um, you know uh, maybe we will do detergents and uh, detergents and uh, the polymers at a later uh, discussion so uh, uh, folks that is it for today I want to thank you for tuning in I want to thank you for participating in today's lesson for those who will view the lesson later on I want to say God bless you as you watch in our next lesson I mean next week Wednesday we shall do biology so the biology people that have been asking me for biology you tune in next week uh, we are done with this part of chemistry and then we'll come back to chemistry later on so I want to wish you a good week I want to wish you God's blessings until we meet again stay put bye bye